Hi, welcome to part four of Learn Buffalo in Go. Today we're going to talk about controllers. That's the C in the MVC pattern, Model View Controller. Controllers are what return a page response in many cases. Um, in Buffalo they're called actions. One common use for an MVC type project is to create uh, resources, uh, maybe blogs or users or some other type of content. In that type of system, there's usually four things we need to worry about. Create a resource, uh, read the resource, update the resource, or delete the resource. That's a pattern commonly referred to as CRUD. Uh, let's take a look at how that works. So take the example resource of blogs. Each of these actions goes along with a request. In the middle, we have a pattern, we have a URL pattern. For the bottom three, we can see the URL pattern is identical but the method is different. Uh, Buffalo knows how to handle that. So a more complicated pattern would involve nested resources. So here you can see how the route names are a little different. We include the ID of the parent entity, in this case a user, but everything else is pretty much the same. When we get into Buffalo code, we have to define an HTTP handler for each of these requests. What we also see in the middle is this name. Buffalo is going to give a name to each of these routes that follows an internal pattern. But this is something that will come in handy later when we try to refer to paths or create links to a specific route. Okay, let's get into the code. So we'll be building off part three of our repo. Uh, App.go is where we define each of the routes that we need. Our first step will be to uh, re-enable the pop middleware. That gives us a, a database connection on every single HTTP request that we satisfy. Um, you can see mine for some reason doesn't interpret the version 2 of that Buffalo pot middleware. I need to specify that and run a go mod tidy just to clean that up. There are two ways to define controllers or actions here in Buffalo. Uh, we can use the CLI to do it or we can do it by hand. We'll use the CLI to generate the action for this one. Buffalo G for generate. Generate what? An action. Now we name the resource that we want to create this action for, tags. And here we can define um, a couple different routes. For simplicity, we'll just do show. Let's see what files Buffalo generated for us. If we look here in the app.go file, we now have an entry for tags show. And there's a tags show handler. Where is that defined? Here in actions, this, we now have this tags.go file. We also have a tags test file. And down here in templates, we also have a show. So if we remember the CRUD patterns we saw earlier, tag slash show isn't what we wanted. We wanted tags with an ID. So now we can jump back into the CLI and run the routes task. And that new route shows up there. We can see Buffalo gives it a name tag path. So here's some code that we can add to our controller, our action, to satisfy this request. What do we have? Here we get the database connection from the context. Remember our helpful Buffalo context. Down here we're also going to use context to get the parameter. That's that ID value. We're going to create an empty tag and the pop database connection has a find method which we can use to try to load the tag by ID. And down here we're going to use the context again to pass the tag to the template. So if we look at our page, uh, we could navigate to this tag slash ID page and test it out, but we don't have any data yet. So let's take a break from trying to build this controller out and we can look at the different methods that Buffalo has for getting data into our database. In Buffalo, we do that with grifts. Here we can see a placeholder for adding some database seeding stuff. This is uh, some basic code just to add a couple tags. So what are we going to do? We'll just create a list of three tag names, uh, range over that list, and use the models DB method to create those tags in our database. So Buffalo task list will show us what we have. Run the name of our task, and we can see we have some data in our database. You can see the tables that we have. And there we can see we have those three tags created. From here we can copy one of the IDs, run our dev server again, and now we can try to manually 
load that page. Uh, we could certainly update the page title to show the tag title. And there we go. Okay, so this grift task is helpful for adding data in our dev or our production database, but it's not going to be helpful for testing. Um, this same task isn't run during testing. In Buffalo, we can use fixtures for that. What is a fixture? So here's the example. We can see what happens. Um, we just give it a name. Um, we define the table we want the data to go in, and then we add some data. This is each row. We can generate UUIDs, uh, dates. Um, this UUID name function will allow us to reuse that ID later. If we don't need to do that, you can see you can just generate a UUID. So here's a simple fixture for adding tags. On my system, I was having problems with the now method. It was adding a time zone that the database didn't like, so I've just gone with static values here. So how would we use this? If we go back to our actions folder and our tags test, so what would we try to do? Load this show page and make sure that some content is present. So if we update this test, what do we have? Um, this is where we load that fixture, and we're just passing in that name. And again, what are we trying to do? Just like the controller, we're going to try to load a tag, but we don't know any IDs. For our purposes, we can just try to load the last tag that we create. And then what do we do down here? We're going to try to navigate to the page and check the content on that page. So our test gave us an error, um, invalid memory address. Um, Changing the import for the Buffalo Suite to the current version, version 3, uh, should do the trick for us. Okay, so that test passes. Okay, so let's take a little time and look at building out the functionality to add data to our database. We want to seed the database with more data than just three tags. Uh, and this is a simple way to add a user, right? Similar, a similar fashion, we can just define a user and create it. Okay, building on that, we can add some blogs. Uh, so instead of defining all of them here, we could open a file. We can iterate over that file line by line and add the blogs. Uh, and remember down here, we're going to need to add the user. Every blog needs a user. What does that JSON file look like? Something very, very simple just to get started here. So that would work for us to create blogs with no tags. What if we wanted to add the tags that we create up here? We can add a map to store these tags in, populate the map. We can look up that computers tag and add it to all these blogs. OK, so Buffalo is telling us that it managed to insert a bunch of values. So we didn't clear our database before we tried to seed again. We got a one quick trick, Buffalo pop reset. And we'll truncate those tables, rebuild them. And we can seed again. Our blogs are there. And again, we only have three tags. So if you do run this database seed task again, it will generate that data again, so be careful. The next thing we can do is add a route for our blog show. Quick change to specify the ID there for blogs. Before we try to fill out the controller for blog show, we know we're going to want to test this route. And we're going to need to create another fixture to allow us to do that. Um, next to tags, I've created a blogs fixture. The first piece here is to add a simple tag, add a user. And down here, we can create a couple blogs. And we're adding that user to both blogs. Uh, the blogs tags is a many-to-many -many relationship. So we're going to have to add a row in the blogs tags table in order to link this computers tag to one of the blogs. And now let's try to test just like we did with tags. Open up our blogs test file and add some code. So we're going to load the fixture, this time the sample blogs fixture. Try to load the last blog that was created. Again, we don't know the ID. And just verify that this text shows up on the pages. If we run our test, we can see that we get some errors because we don't have the logic built out. So let's do that. So here in blog show, we can do something similar to what we did with tags. We're going to get the database transaction, get the blog ID, create an empty blog, and try to load it by ID. 
Okay, if you were looking closely, I hadn't saved my app.go file, so we're getting some extra errors here, but now some of our tests pass, but not all of them. So our test is looking for the blog title, the blog author, and the blog tag. If we want to simplify, we've only added the title at this point. So if we hide the others for now, we can see that our tests pass. We can go one by one, add these back. Let's add the blog author's name to our template. Let's run our test now. So our test fails, but we're getting a bigger error. Look up here. User full name called using nil pointer. We've only loaded our blog. We haven't loaded some of the related models yet. We need to fix our controller to do that. Remember, there's one easy way to do this with Buffalo Pop. We use this eager method, and it will load the associations for this model. So now if we run our test again, it should pass. Okay, so now let's add the tag name back. We update the template with this code just to return the to show the tag name. We can have multiple blog tags, so we have to loop over that, and that's what that looks like in plush. Now we can see our tests are passing. If we go back to our live site, we do have we can see there's an entry for blogs ID and tags ID. We grab the ID for one of these blogs that we created in our database seed task. We can see what these pages are starting to look like. So we can make this look a little better. We can add these default bootstrap classes. That'll add some color to the tag names. We can also pass in a link. The plush templating system has this helper link to. So now that's a link. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's try to improve this tags page. It would make sense to show some blogs that have this tag, right? One simple change we can make is to add this eager method, and that will load the associations, which would be the blogs for this tag. Before we do that, I want to take a look at what Buffalo Dev Server is doing in the background. This orange text is actually the database query that is run for each request. We'll reload this one, and we can see that the database query is just to select a tag by ID. And this adds that eager method. So now we reload this page. Now we can see there's two database queries, select tags and select blogs. So the dev server can be really helpful to confirm what we're trying to get from the database for each request. So now we're getting blogs back on this route. We just need to update the template. Now we can just print out the blog title. There we go. We can modify that to actually show a link. Another thing we can do to add to this page is to show related blogs. How could we do that? If we go back to our blogs controller, we're loading blogs, we're loading the tags, and we want to take one or two of those tags and look for blogs that also share that tag. So here's some code that would do that for us. Grab, let's say, the first one, and find all the blog tags that share that tag ID. You can see we're going to use the eager method to actually to load the blogs as well. If we start thinking this site gets pretty successful, this might be a lot of blogs. We don't want to display all of those. We could just limit it to three. And so now if we load our page, we haven't updated the template we can see we've added some database queries when we load this route. So let's update our template and show those related blogs if they are available on this one. Now we have some cards. We can navigate around. Uh, one thing we see right away is that fourth blog is appearing here. We don't want that to happen. How could we modify the query to exclude the current blog? So we have one where condition, tag ID. We can add another where condition to exclude the blog that we're loading up here. And now we can see on 7th, 4th, 6th, 2nd. OK, that's working. That's a simple introduction to controllers. We're using get requests here. We'll look at how to make post, put, and delete requests later. We'll also have a video on templates and the helper methods that are available. And we'll look at creating forms. Thanks for watching.